I'm just a guy who loves Disney that has way too much time on his hands. If anybody from Disney is watching, please don't sue me. Yeah. I'm here to rate, review, and describe all of your favorite things from the magical world of Disney. I'm Fallen Anduani, and welcome to my Disney news and reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Disney News and Reviews. I'm Fallen91E and I am so sorry it's been a long time since I've posted a, uh, another video. I was actually going to post uh, that week's video on uh, August 27th, but uh, Hurricane Irene happened, you can see the images right here, and uh, it knocked out my power for six straight days. I didn't have power, but luckily I had running water and everything so I could handle all that. Um, but I couldn't edit a video, I couldn't really record a video, um, I had to take everything to work to charge it. Uh, you can, you know, if you're following me on my Twitter, you could kind of see where I was going. I had to stay at a hotel for a couple days. It just was, a, it was crazy. And then finally my power came on that Friday or Saturday after, uh, but I was going down to Ocean City that weekend for Labor Day because my grandparents wanted to see me. And I already had that had planned for that, but I was going to do a video earlier that week, just you know, to kind of be the Labor Day video. But I couldn't, fit, you know, do all that. Um, so, uh, you know, unfortunately, that never happened. Uh, but I did get a couple things from, uh, uh, you know, Disney related from Ocean City, uh, one of those ran you know, random stores, uh, you know, that, that was Disney related. So uh, I might do an unboxing video with that because I wanted to kind of get, you know, I want to, you know, give you as many videos as I possibly can. Uh, you know, you probably already have seen the Hurricane Irene video, which uh, I posted uh, a couple hours ago. So, just watch that if you haven't. You can see pretty much the you know the devastation and where the tree fell that knocked out my power for six days. Um, but aside from that, that's pretty you know it's been pretty you know been pretty much it. Sorry about that, but uh, it's been pretty much it. Uh, I know I've been reading all your guys' comments. It's just been really crazy. You know, just getting everything back to normal. But everything is pretty much back to normal this weekend, and I wanted to get a video to you as quickly as possible. Uh, you know, so I, I waited. You know, you know, I, I'm doing it today and not tomorrow. Part you know part of the reason because it's NFL season, baby. Yeah, I can't wait. You know, the Ravens, my you know my team are going to be playing the Steelers. It's going to be awesome. Great stuff. Uh, you know, but unfortunately, it is September 11th tomorrow. So, and it's kind of a somber note, but it's also great because of the you know the whole start of the NFL season. You know, America goes on past the tragedy that you know that was September 11th, and um, around this time I get a little nostalgic and uh, kind of remember where I was um, when that happened. I was a sophomore in high school uh, when when that happened, and I just remember seeing all that and it's and it's craziness. And uh, the re the recoil from that, and just the fact that it's ten years—it's been ten years already. It's, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, a lot of stuff has changed. Uh, it was 2001. That's something else. You know, my uh, thoughts and prayers go out to the families of the of the people and the, you know who were affected by September 11th directly. And um, you know, it's a, it's a horrible thing. And I'm glad that you know nowadays we're a little bit safer, even though you know we're kind of fear-stricken a little bit. You know, with the whole flying thing, but. Uh, you know, you know, life goes on, and it's it's good that they didn't push back the foot, you know, uh, the start of the football season because if they did, that would just show that, uh, you know, America isn't moving on. But uh, you know, let's mourn in the morning, and then the afternoon and evening, watch some awesome football, and to show why America is awesome. That's exactly what we need to do. Uh, so yeah, there's my rant on September 11th, and uh, I love you guys. That uh, awesome stuff. Anyway. Uh, Got some stuff in the mail. Two books. I want to show you, uh, you know, that you know, before I get started with everything, this is gonna be a long video. I'm sorry, long video. If you want to skip, you got the buttons down there. It's the whole reason why I do this because I know you people don't want to listen to what I have to say. Uh, so anyway, the first book I got is called Smart Packing for Today's Traveler. Um, I got it because I've never actually read a, a packing book, and I'm interested in kind of learning what I'm doing wrong. And uh, the fact is, I'm actually going to be doing a uh, three to four part uh, a video series on getting ready to go to Disney World, and part three will be packing. So um, I want to kind of get all the information as I can, try it, try uh, test it out, and then uh, show you and give you guys all the best information that I possibly could. It's a it's a used book. I got it for like five bucks off of Amazon. Love Amazon, and um, it was twenty, but I only got it for five. And uh, 
just uh, you know, you know, actually has some really cool, uh, cool stuff. This is uh, all post 9/11, so they got all the TSA regulations and, and, and different things like that in there. Really, you know, you know shows you what to do and, and how to be safe while you know, while traveling. And probably the big book, the book that everybody uh, that probably has been waiting for me to see, or at least I've been waiting for it, is the unofficial guide to Walt Disney World 2012. If you haven't gotten this book and you are going down to Disney World soon, pick it up. Amazon has it, you know, great shipping. They will ship it out really fast to you, and uh, they have a lot of really good information. I know you guys have heard me show these books a thousand times. I'm going to show it one more time for all the new, the new video well, watchers and whatnot. This is the book that I'm going to be using to do all the, you know, the travel guides and everything like that. They have every bit of information that you could ever want when going to Disney World. If you don't want to watch all my videos, read this book and you'll, you know, and they'll set you straight. They have everything in here, you know, hotel reviews, restaurant reviews, ride reviews. Um, they have little uh, um, uh, touring plans that actually are proven to work. Uh, you know. The series with more than four million copies sold. It is a, a great, a great read, and they update it every year. Um, I have a nice little collection brewing in my bookshelf over there, so that's really cool. Uh, I love the the image on the front; it's the Expedition Everest ride, so uh, awesome stuff. They, but it also has Universal, uh, the you know, with the Wizarding World, of Harry, uh, Harry Potter. They also have Sea World in there, so uh, all and uh, plus all four Disney. Um, theme park so definitely check this out pick it up it's a uh, it's a great great buy I know it's thick but it's just it's filled with you know information you don't need to read every page but uh, if you ever need any questions or or information this is the way this is where to go or just come and see me but then again I'll refer you to this so excellent stuff these guys are awesome so yeah um, just you know, stay tuned for my bonus video that's going to be coming up after this. Um, I have a couple bonus videos. I want to do part one of uh, my four-part getting ready to go to Disney World series. The part one is planning, so I want to be t telling you how to plan uh, for Disney World, and then uh, part two will be gathering, part three will be packing, and part four will be going, and that'll be my uh, Disney World experience. And uh, that'll be a, you know multiple videos after that. So technically, it's a three-part video, but uh, anyway. Part one packing will be coming up later tonight, so just keep an eye out for that. Uh, or or we'll, we'll later tonight, early tomorrow, because I'm sure it'll take a while to upload. So yeah, I think that's it. Let's uh, get right to the news. The official Disney Parks blog today confirmed the long-rumored park-wide role-playing attraction, Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. Merlin the Magician will recruit guests to become apprentice sorcerers and then help them with maps and clues that show where and how to defeat an army of Disney villains. The new attraction is scheduled to open in early 2012. Go to the link right down there. I know I explain it to you a lot more than ever I ever could. Uh, it's it actually looks really, really awesome, so check this out. I can't wait you know, for this to go into effect, and then I'll uh, go down and uh, hopefully I'll be able to play, so that'd be awesome. Ride Makers, the store that lets guests build uh, and customize their very own radio-controlled vehicles, has moved to its new location in the marketplace at Downtown Disney. The store now takes up a location in part of the building occupied by the Team Mickey in the in the marketplace. Uh, Team Mickey continues to have a space dedicated to sports merchandise, so it's sharing the uh, the space with Team Mickey. Uh, so, you know, so that's pretty cool. I always thought Ride, Ma Ride Makers was awesome. Uh, the store was a little bit too big, I thought, I, so this is kind of, you know, more fitting for them. They'll be able to show you, uh, show you how to make, you know, your own custom, uh, you know, radio control vehicles. Now, the ride makers move from the west side location meant that work can now begin on transforming the former Virgin Megastore space into Splitsville, a 50,000 square foot upscale entertainment center that combines bowling with billiards, dining, music, and nightlife. Uh, they recently put up the construction scrims on there uh, because they're you know they're going to be building this thing and I can't wait to check this out. They, you know, they Disney goes all out with theming, so the fact that they're making a bowling alley, I, you can already see that it's pretty much kind of a 50s style. Uh, they're going to be serving sushi there. It looks really awesome. You know, kind of a, a new old mix. It's the new hotness meeting the old and busted. So they're going to make the old busted hotness. So it's going to be great. Um, I can't wait to see that, just more on that as it becomes available. And uh, some rehab and refurbishment news. T today marks the last day for the Journey into Narnia Prince Caspian show at Disney's Hollywood Studios. 
Disney has not yet announced what will be replacing the attraction. It is a long overdue uh, execution for this attraction. Uh, Prince Caspian has been out for years, and the fact that they haven't updated it since you know until now is just is, is beyond me. So, for every new Disney movie that comes out, they should have like a behind the scenes making of sort of thing for this. If they if people want to go and watch it. It's just a small space for the theater, and uh, it's been long overdue for this ride to be put down. So, finally, they put it down. No, no word yet on what's going to be coming up after it. The Primeval World, which has been closed since January, was seen testing ahead of its scheduled reopening in the next couple weeks. The refurbishment is expected to be completed on September 14th, reopening on September 15th. Uh, I don't really know why it's taken so long. I know one of the cast members or the crew people that were working on it actually died during uh, an accident uh, on there so I'm sure that took up a, a bunch of time and um, uh, this ride is this refurb has been go ongoing for the past couple of, uh, of months and uh, now I'm really looking forward to getting back on it because I love the primeval world it's one of my top uh, rides at uh, the animal kingdom so uh, um, you'll find that out later and um, you know I'm, I'm glad to see it up and running again it was it's, it's a really good attraction and finally, Planet Hollywood at Downtown Disney has changed its operating hours from 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. to, which is what it's now, 11 a.m. to midnight. So the, the hours are now 11 a.m. to midnight. Um, so if you're going down there, please remember all that and uh, you know, just work that into your itinerary. Uh, so yeah, that's the news. So let's get right to the review. Now a lot of news happened between the you know the last two weeks and now, but I'll, I'll, but a lot of it is kind of older, so I can't really you know say it now. If you really want to know, go to www.magic.com and you'll be able to find a lot more. But for right now, what I want to do, I'm not going to review anything because I was actually going, I actually made a video la uh, last week and I was going to upload it, but I realized that what I was talking about, I already talked about in a prior video. Uh, I, I was talking about less in, in the last video um, my top favorite Hollywood Studios rides and I realized when I was uploading it uh, last week that I had already did that and I was like, oh, I can't remember. It was the end of a long week and I couldn't believe that I did that. Uh, so I actually did make a video last week but it never was uploaded and it's been deleted into non-existence. Uh, but anyway, this week I'm going. I'm, I was. I'm going to be doing the video that I should have been. I should have done last week, which is my top favorite attraction, top ten favorite attractions at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, "Pond under one Don't you hate the Animal Kingdom?" Um, I don't hate it. I dislike it m more than the other parks. I, uh, I think it is. It's not as up to snuff with 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 the level of the other parks. But there are still things at Disney's Hollywood Studios that. I have to see every time I go to Disney World. Um, a lot of people like the Disney, uh, the Animal Kingdom, and I can understand why. I'm just not a big animal guy. Um, I'm not really big into zoos and whatnot, um, but a lot of people are. And you know, I, I'm not going to ever put it down, but I'm just I'm going to tell you that I don't really like it. Um, but there are attractions here, like I said, that are very, very important to your Walt Disney World entertainment value. So basically, here are my top 10 attractions at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Number 10 is the Pangani Forest Exploration Trail and the Maharaja Jungle Trek. They're technically the same thing, so I put them in one, I, I kind of lumped them all into one thing. Um, they're both the animal part of the Animal Kingdom. They are the zoo part of the Animal Kingdom. You walk through and you see different animals. They, uh, they're tigers and zebras and all kinds of different things. Uh, the, the Pangani Forest Expo Exploration Trail is in the Africa section of uh, Disney's Animal Kingdom and the Maharaja Jungle Trek is in the Asia section of uh, Disney's Animal Kingdom as you saw right there. Uh, so, you know, both are, you know, are pretty interesting. The animals are there. They, they have there's tigers, which are really cool. A lot of people like that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's completely safe, really safe. And Disney does a really good job with the animals because they put like, uh, what do they call them, enhancements? Uh, you know, for the tigers and the animals to play with to get them, entice them to come out and be seen uh, because obviously tigers and other animals are like, I'm sick and tired of seeing you. 
That's part of the reason why I don't like zoos. All the animals look depressed. If I want to see an animal, I want to watch it on Discovery Channel in HD with, you know, the planet Earth or something. I got that on Blu-ray. So, those are one. I like to see animals in their natural habitat, not the depressed things at the zoo. Anyway, uh, number nine is uh, Flights of Wonder. This is a uh, really awesome show in the uh, Asia section. I think it's the Asia section of Disney's Animal Kingdom. And uh, it's a show where they show off all the different types of birds um, that, you know, the Animal Kingdom has to offer. There's all bald eagles, cranes, vultures, and whatnot. Uh, you know, some fly right over your head, and there's been actual stories of pe uh, birds pooping on you. So beware of that when you're watching the, uh, the Flights of Wonder. Because, uh, you know, they're birds. They don't have control of their bowels. It's just what happens. Um... But yeah, it's 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 really cool. I like learning about different things and animals and whatnot. This is the stuff that I kind of like because birds are kind of very proud animals. So uh, you know they have, you know, I like learning about different about different things. And this is just happens to be a, you know one of the better shows at Disney's uh, Animal Kingdom. So uh, check that out when you're going down. Number eight is the Festival of the Lion King show. This is an awesome show. This replaced the Pocahontas and her forest friends um, over at uh, Camp Minnie Mickey. And it's actually really cool. There's a lot of dancing. There's a lot of music from the movie uh, in there. And it's all uh, people dressed as animals dancing around and portraying the characters from the movie. Uh, it's, it's really cool. It's a lot better than the Circle of Life uh, show at, uh, at Epcot, obviously. Um, but this is, it, it actually is a really good show. It's a lot better than the, po the Pocahontas show that it replaced. And uh, it's totally worth seeing. Awesome show, the Festival of the Lion King. Number seven are the Kali River Rapids. If you love River Rapids rides, this is awesome. This is the, you know, the rides for you. Uh, this is in the Asia Pavilion or the Asia section of the of Disney's Animal Kingdom. And uh, it's awesome. I mean, this River Rapids ride will get you wet. Everybody's getting wet no matter what in this attraction. You don't try to not get wet. If you don't want to get wet, don't get on the, you know, don't get on the ride. Uh, you will get wet on this attraction. It's what it's designed for. Uh, this is a really cool ride. You know, it's standard rapids ride. You, you know, there's like eight people in the in, in the raft, and you go around the rapids, and there's a story kind of a like like something happened, and um, you are diverted into the rapids section of this river, and all heck breaks loose, and then finally you come back after getting completely drenched, on a, you know, during a waterfall. But uh, it's a really cool ride, very scenic. You know, there is a theme and a story to it, so check that out when you're down there. The Kali River Rapids, number seven. Number six is It's Tough to Be a Bug, located in the Tree of Life, inside the Tree of Life. Uh, there really isn't, it's, I guess you call it Discovery Island. Uh, but it's located inside the Tree of Life. Um, this ride is, or this attraction, show, whatever, is actually pretty interesting. Uh, as you make your way into the Tree of Life, you notice all the different murals on the walls, and you get to see different uh, animals that make up the Tree of Life, which is it's just cool. It's a really nice touch. But once you go in, you get to see all these different movie posters uh, with that are now bug themed. So instead of Beauty and the Beast, it's Beauty and the Bees. You know that kind of you know a kind of a play on that sort of thing. Uh, but the show you're going to see is it's tough to be a bug, and the, you know, the bugs from a bug's life have. Uh, show you know are showing or are, are putting on this show for you and it is 3d so check that out it's kind of a 4d because there's a lot of interaction uh you know, there's uh you know interactive seats which kids freak out over it's in the dark which kids freak out over there's lights and sounds and scary smells which kids freak out over and then there's some you know some humor which kids and incidentally freak out over don't know why but kids will freak out over this i think it's the whole dark thing um, so m most kids like it, but there are some kids that have to be taken out of the out of this place because it does scare kids sometimes, and that's kind of an amusing thing. I know it's kind of hard, you know, it's it's, it's bad for me to say that, but it can be amusing sometimes because when you're supposed to laugh, you hear screams. A little weird. I'm not gonna, uh, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. And um, it's pretty interesting. And uh, it, either way, the show is funny. I enjoy it. Uh, it's one of the stops that I have to hit each and every time I go into the uh, the Dis uh, into Disney's Animal Kingdom. Uh, so yeah, tough to be a bug. Number six. Now my top five all-time favorite uh, uh, Animal Kingdom um, rides attractions. Anywho, number five is Finding Nemo the Musical. This this is awesome. This really is cool. The puppetry in this is outstanding. The uh, there are there is no real 
Yes, there's music in there, um, but it's basically telling the story of Finding Nemo. But the main thing to go, the main reason to go see this is the puppetry and the stage and everything that they do to create an underwater feel. It's in the Theater of the Wild in the uh, in Dinoland, USA, which is kind of weird, but that's just where the Theater the Theater in the Wild is. Um, a lot of people really, really like this attraction and this show. It's really awesome. You can check it out here on YouTube. Uh, the music's awesome. The uh, the, you know, the whole the, the pageantry is great. The puppetry is awesome. So check that out. Finding Nemo the Musical, number five. Number four, I mentioned earlier, is the Primeval Whirl. This is a roller coaster. It's a wild mouse coaster that happens to spin. You, you uh, I don't know exactly what the theme of it is. It's going back in time, I guess you could say. Um, it's the, I guess it, you can call this the experience of going back in time. Uh, it's in Dinoland, USA. And you get into, after a long wait, you get into this little car that holds about four people. And uh, this car spins at determined time. So you go up the line, you go up the thing, and there is no one real steep drop, you know, that, that most uh, coasters have. This is a, a wild mouse coaster, so basically there's just a, lots of sharp turns and a little, a couple dips here and there, to, you know, just to get you down, back down in the uh, in ground level. And uh, at certain strategic places that they have marked off, as you go around the turn, all of a sudden, boom, your your uh, your car starts to spin, and uh, that adds a whole new element of excitement and thrill to the actual ride. When we were on it, uh, it was me, my brother, and this little girl that uh, her mother did not want to get on the ride because she was not a roller coaster person. So we said, okay, yeah, we'll we, you know we'll sit her down, and we'll make sure she you know, you know she'll be okay. Or uh, I think she was sitting in the middle, actually. I think she was sitting in the middle. Anyway, you're thrown around in this ride a little bit, and my brother accidentally um, squished her a little bit. We're not small people, so he's, you know, he squished her, you know, spinning around, squish. And uh, she was okay. It's not like she got a black eye or anything, but, um, you know, it was, a, <laughs> it was a little embarrassing. And we were just like, here, there's your, there's your daughter. Let's walk away before we get into an altercation. Hopefully nothing happens. Uh, but yeah, she was fine. It was it was it was all cool. But that's just one of the one of the funny stories from that ride, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it, to it reopening. And uh, I want to get on it when I go down there. So it's a it's an awesome ride. So check it out when you're down there. Number three is Dinosaur, obviously in Dinoland, USA. Um, Dinosaur is an awesome ride. It's kind of in the same category as the Indiana Jones and the Forbidden Eye in Disneyland. You are you hop on a car after going through a long wait and the wait is actually really cool because there are different sculptures and things to view and uh, when you're in this you actually go into the Dino Institute um, and they actually there's Bill Nye the science guy giving you uh, different dinosaur facts it's almost like a mini museum with skeletons and whatnot of different dinosaurs it's actually really cool and then you go into the place where, they're t where they tell you they're going to send you back in time to retrieve a dinosaur and you go back in time and you gotta avoid the Tyrannosaurus or Carnosaurus or whatever it is and uh, that stupid Carnosaurus. Yep. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you why that. I say that now, later. I'll say it later and stuff. But the Carnosaurus pops up and tries to thwart your stuff. And uh, the cool thing about the ride is you hop into this car, and the car is uh, the wheels are actually just going on a flat surface, but the hydraulics are moving you around with you know to. Well, we know what the terrain is supposed to be, so if it's bumpy, you're really jerking around. So you got to hold on and really make sure your seatbelt's on. And uh, it's not, I wouldn't say it's for small kids, but, you know, there's a lot of thrill to it and a lot of excitement. And, uh, it, you know, it will cause a, a, a little bit of fear, um, but it's a really awesome ride. And I really you know, think you should check it out if you go to the, uh, the Animal Kingdom. Number two is the Kilimanjaro Safaris. Uh, this is this is one of the two attractions that you have to get on each and every single time you go down to Disney World, not to Animal Kingdom, to Disney World. The whole reason to go to Animal Kingdom is for this, and my number one. Um, this is an awesome experience because you actually go hop on a a bus and you go through, and animals are com just completely surrounding you. You go through. It's a little. It's a mini safari. Now the animals are kind of you know are used to humans and used to the the truck, so you're not going to be gored or rammed on. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. It's ten times better than going on a uh, you know in the Pangani Forest Exploration Trail or the uh, the Maharaja Jungle Trek, just because there's narration. You get to see all these different 
main animals. You can see giraffes, lions, alligators, rhinos, elephants. Just really cool things that, uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, this just, this has a, 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 a thing, a feel to it that, you, you know, you have to see each and every single time you go to Disney World. So the whole, one of the whole reasons to go to the Animal Kingdom uh, is this ride in particular amongst everything else. So uh, the Kilimanjaro Safaris, excellent stuff. And my number one all-time attraction at Disney's Animal Kingdom is and always forever will be Expedition Everest. This is a mine train coaster that is awesome. If you go to Disney World, you have to hit this. You can hit this over the Kilimanjaro Safaris and still have a good experience at Disney's Animal Kingdom. You can have a total crap day. Get on this and your day might be worth, you know, will still be worthwhile. Um, this roller coaster is more than just a roller coaster because as you're waiting in line, there, the line is actually, dirt, you know, Disney put a lot of theming into this. They wanted to get a certain feel for when you finally get on the train. So there's a lot of history toward the Yeti, a lot of history, you know, of the uh, the the region and area uh, of uh, of that per certain part of Asia. Uh, it's, it's in the Asia section, by the way. Um, and I don't know really how else to say it, but it's just so awesome. And the ride itself is great. It's very thrilling, but it's not too thrilling to the point where no, you know you know where people can't get on it. Yeah, it's fast. Yeah, there you know there's banks and turns. There's no loop to loop, so. You know, if you can't handle the uh, the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, don't get on this. Uh, but if you if you think the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is nothing, then get on this. You'll love this. Um, it's just great. I mean, there's a giant 20 foot tall Yeti in there, and just the you know the stuff that they do. You go backwards for a little bit. You stop. You go forward. I don't know. There's a magic to this ride that makes it awesome, and that's why the the you know, this is my favorite attraction. At Disney's, um, at Disney's Animal Kingdom, and probably in my top five, in uh, my all-time favorite of uh, of Disney World. Um, so yeah, definitely hit that each and every single time you go down to Disney World. Uh, it is probably the main reason to go to the Animal Kingdom, uh, amongst seeing all the animals and, and different things. But this is probably the best ride in Disney's Animal Kingdom, according to me. So one of the things that you have to hit, or you must hit, the Expedition Everest. Check it out. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I would love to hear your top 10 uh, Animal Kingdom attractions, so post them below. Uh, so yeah, awesome stuff. There you go. My 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 top 10 out of Disney's Animal Kingdom attractions. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's Disney news and reviews. Um, again, uh, you, know, you know, purchase this book uh, if you haven't already. The Walt Disney World, the, the Unofficial Guide to Walt Disney World 2012. It's awesome. Uh, sorry for the audio, I just noticed that I didn't put my, my, my microphone in, so if it's kind of awkward or low, just let me know, you know, just let me know it shouldn't be, but I, sh I should be able to work with it. Uh, obviously, it's not completely up to, up to par, but I'm not going to redo this video because of that, because I had some good stuff to say there. Um, but yeah, you know, grab that book, you know, watch out for my, uh, you know, my bonus videos that are coming up after this, it should be pretty cool. Um, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to doing videos again. Sorry for you know the two-week vacation that I had. It was, it was nice, but one of, one of those weeks I didn't have power, so that was really fun. Oh, so, yeah, so if anybody from Disney is watching, um, please don't sue me. I really want people to go to Disney World, so I'm just trying to help you guys, help them, help them, help you, help me, help you, help you, help me. However you want to put it, just trying to get good, good karma to you, good karma to you. Uh, yeah, so go to allears.net, touringplans.com, wdwmention.com for our latest and greatest Disney news. Buy this book if you're going down. Go to waltdisneyworld.com, straight from the horse's mouth. Good information there, too. Uh, so, yeah, I will see you guys next week for another Disney news and reviews. Hopefully, there's no hurricanes. Bye, guys.